Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Seychelle Van Poole. And I'm Sarah Reynolds. Today, we're going to talk about something that is very real while building our empires, um, and that's fear. Uh, also anxiety mm-hmm. or really the unknown, right? And fear can show up in different ways. I know that I talk a lot uh, to different leaders that have you know, a fear of team members leaving or a fear of w- what's going to happen next in the market or um, a fear of hiring when they know that they need to hire, mm-hmm. right? The truth mm-hmm. is, is that if you look and study newspaper headlines, you see that fear sells. And so many times, um, society, our society sort of teaches to base um, things around fear. And to be honest, mm. fear is actually not necessarily a bad thing. It is given to us to be a survival instinct, right? So yeah. it's not the fear itself isn't a bad thing. It is what we do when we have the fear or anxiety that really sets us apart, Um, and I remember, I don't know if you remember this say, but, um, it's in my, on the wall in my home office, but our tribe got together one day and, uh, we really poured into each other. And I remember us, uh, sharing with one another, how we see each other. I don't know if if anyone listening has ever done this exercise, but I highly recommend it. Um, especially if you're Mm -hmm. feeling down so many times we don't see our own strengths sometimes. And so we need others to sort of pour into us. And so we went around the room and we just poured into one another. And I remember when it got to me, um, I think the very first couple things out of my friends and tribes mouths were you're fearless, you're courageous. And I was sitting there thinking, Oh my goodness! They they don't they don't know me, <laughs> meaning because I'm full, I, I, mm-hmm. I like I'm, I'm full mm-hmm. of fear. But but what I later sort of realized is no, they do they do know me. What they're seeing is how I react in the midst of fear, and I think that's what's mm-hmm. important is. What are the what what do you do when when fear anxiety sort of creeps in um, to to you as a leader or into into your organization even if there's like a sort of um, sense of fear in the organization uh, what do you do when that happens I think that that is the key thing mm-hmm. um, in terms of handling fear I. Um, I re- I was sitting in the room when that happened, Sarah, and I think it's amazing how we see ourselves sometimes so differently than how somebody else sees us. And um, I remember when that was said, and there was a kind of a unanimous, like, yes, absolutely fearless, like takes action, like gets it done, like driven. Um, I remember all these amazing things that we were talking about with you, leader, and um I love. I love that internally. It almost felt like imposter syndrome, um, with hearing some of it that did. because you are so valid and um, so courageous and so brave. And you know, I think what what's a sign of of an amazing leader is that even when things feel really scary, um, we sometimes as leaders are faking it till we make it because we have to. Um, we don't have an option. To, to sit and be afraid because so many people rely on us. And I, I remember like in my first, like really uncertain kind of scary experience as a leader, they were like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? And I just remember saying, I have no idea, but we're going to figure it out. I don't know. I'm going to yes. figure it out though. I will figure it out. And they're like, but what if the company shuts down? And I was like, that's not, failure is not the option. So we're not even going to go there. That's not the option. We're going to figure this out though. And I, I remember being terrified absolutely freaking terrified going, I don't know, maybe the company could go under, but that is not the option. That is not what we were going to do. Yes. Um, and just being determined enough to say, no, or something, something else will happen, but that's not going to be one of the options. So I, I love there that. Are, I, I, I think that, I think that's what actually sets true leaders apart in terms of what, well, in terms of, I believe the best leaders are transparent in the midst yeah. of fear. And so I love that your answer to your, your team was like, yeah, I I don't know, but we will figure it out. And I think that that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. And to know it's okay to, to be transparent with your team. What I think is important is that, but we're going to figure it out statement, um, to make sure that they know that you don't know it all, 
uh, but, but it will be figured out. And that failure is not an option. I mm-hmm. love that. Well, I, yeah, I mean, that's just the way it goes. And I think this leads us really into the three simple steps that you can rely on as a leader. And step one really is very simple. It is you can, and in the midst of fear and in the midst of chaos, oftentimes you get tunnel vision and you can only see so far in front of you because all the information and all the answers are not available yet. You don't know what's going to happen. And so step one is to do the next right thing. One thing, take action on one item. And that doesn't mean that action is going to completely remove your fear, but it will quiet it and it will fight it because you are focused on moving forward and looking one step forward. Because when you walk, you have to look where you're walking. You have to pay attention to that. And many times when, you know, fear enters someone's mind, it causes them to freeze. Well, when you freeze, you look way out, way, way out, right? You look up, you look way out. Well, if you can't see beyond where your tunnel vision is, it's going to look really dark and scary. So if you can look down at your feet, Mm and take the next one logical step. You can see your foot and you can see how far it can stretch. So do that. And, you know, I've been there before and I found that when I take action and just that one next right step, it's going to lead me to the second step and it's not going to let the fear consume me instead. I I just had an experience, um, a physical experience where I was consumed by fear and Mm. uh, we just got back from our president's club trip where we took the top 10 in our organization to an all expense paid four night trip. And one day we did an excursion. And when we, when we initially signed up for the excursion, it was supposed to be um, going through um, the longest underground river in the world that they know about. Uh, And Mm -hmm. when we got there, the whole team that was there was like, let's do all of all that they offer. And one of the things that they offer was rappelling down 40 from a hole down into the river, um, 40 Mm. meters. And I am, I'm petrified of heights, like petrified of heights. And so I was like, yeah, let's do it. (laughs) Like knowing that I was going to be very afraid. (laughs) And so, um, (laughs) so, so we got to that point, we did the underground, uh, river tour and which was amazing. And then we rode bikes to this hole that we were going to rappel down and my heart mm. was pounding. I, I had never done anything height related like that before. Mm. And um, I, all of my team members were going and it was like me and one other team member left. And they were like, you have to go. We're not going to leave you as, as the last one. And I'm like, and my heart's pounding and I start really being oh. vi- visibly afraid. afraid. Mm-hmm. And I remember the guide um, looking at me and saying, just do the next part, like put your leg over the rope. And so he's like, don't think about the, mm-hmm. all of the things, just put your leg over the rope. So I put my leg over the rope. Then it was like, okay, move forward one step. I move forward one step, sit back mm-hmm. in the harness. I sit, sat back in the harness. But what at the end of the day, I repelled down 40 meters. Um, I was so scared, but how I got there was doing just the next thing. It wasn't like Mm. if I thought and just looked down at at the hole, I wouldn't have done it, but it was like, just do the next thing. And so I think that so many times when we're consumed with fear, just do the next thing, do the next thing. I love that. That's such a um, vision. I'm like imagining you doing this the entire time too. Also, I'm really proud of you for overcoming that. That's very scary. (laughs) I was so proud of myself. (laughs) Way to go. Way to go. Um, You know, and in in the midst of the next best step, a couple of um, things that Sarah had as suggestions, which I thought were really good that I wanted to share with you too, is sometimes the next best next best step is actually something unrelated to the business for a quick second. And what I mean by that is like, I know in the midst of downturns, it's honestly when I get in my best shape because I take runs more. Um, because I can Mm. control that and it's my thinking time um, and I work out more. And so I use that time to fuel my thinking time to take the next step in our business. And so movement and physical activity creates dopamine. It creates endorphins. It creates positive energy and positive reinforcement physically and mentally. 
and can help you in then figuring out what next business step you need to take. Um, but also too, like another example could be in the midst of fear, phone a friend, right? Your team was even like, we're not leaving you as the last one, right? They were there yes. for you. Yep. So call, like literally here's a quarter, call someone who cares, right? <laughs> and it's going to help you. <laughs> yeah. So don't be afraid of doing that. You know, and also too, I think sometimes um, in the midst of fear and panic, it's a, what is the absolute worst that could happen? Like if I had to create a list yeah. of a worst case plan, like what is the worst that could happen and make a best case scenario? The best case is we figure it out. We grow, we multiply our business. We hire awesome people. We have cohesion. It's amazing. Worst case, we try and try and try. We're exhausted. We still lose. We shut down the business and we have to start over again. And that is going to stink but that is the worst case scenario. And that is as bad as I will let it get, right? And then you know what your your top and bottom are. Chances are though, it's going to be very, very, very rare unless you just take no action at all that you're gonna end up in the worst case place. The lack of action is really the yep. only way you're gonna and, get to the and, worst case. Yep. And, and I love that say, and I think that it's so important to start with that first sort of physical thing because what can happen yeah. sometimes is, you know, I, I, I can be laying in my bed thinking of worst case or being consumed with fear. Yeah. But when I get up and I get on the Peloton or if I get my body moving, all of a sudden, no matter what's going on, it feels better. And so I think starting yeah. there, you can get through anything if you ha have your physical health. And so I think starting there is so important. So step two, and this is, this is honestly my favorite one. I, I do this multiple times a week when I'm having a bad day, when it feels like everything's falling apart, when I'm consumed with fear, <laughs> it's to focus on others and not yourself. Mm. I think so many times, you know, we can be, um, really focused on internal, like what's going on. And whenever that happens, I'm like, who needs me right now? Who needs my help? Who's a friend that I know is going through a hard time that I can call and pour into? Who is a team member that I can lift up today? Who is a client that I can spend time with? Um, focusing on other people when you are afraid, for some reason, it eliminates, it doesn't take the fear completely away, but it makes it makes my energy focus on others versus inside. And so then I stop thinking about what I'm afraid afraid of because I'm mm -hmm. focusing on others. I love that. And one of my all-time favorite quotes is of uh, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers quote that he says, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And I love that by focusing on mm. others, that's allowing you to help pull others together to figure out ways to contribute to your community and to truly be the helper in the midst of fear or in the midst of um, uh, hard times. That's so cool. Yeah. And then encouraging your team and your everyone in your organization to do the same. So like yes. if, if you are, if you are sensing, you know, there have been different times um, in sort of my business's um, life cycle where the fear has, has sort of taken a hold in the organization. So like, mm -hmm. and typically it's uh, when anything is changing, um, many yeah. times it will cause uh, people in your organization to be afraid. Um, and what I try to do is when I'm sensing that, or am I seeing that, or, or I'm feeling that, encouraging the team, okay, is there a worthy cause or a nonprofit we can go focus on together? Is there mm -hmm. um, clients that need us that we can help go above and beyond and help right now? And so sometimes as the leader, not only are you uh, obviously dealing with fear, but helping your team members say, let's focus on others and um, other organizations mm -hmm. right now versus ourselves. And before you know it, the fear um, is past, you're past it. Mm -hmm. And so just focusing on others is so key there. And I love the script too, when you call for something like this, the script is so simple of like, hi, Sarah, this is Seychelle over at Van Poole Properties. My only motive for calling you today is just to check in on you and see how you're doing. I know it's kind of crazy right now in the world. And I just wanted to know if there's anything we can help you with, if there's anything you need in the community. I mean, we had meals that we were delivering to elder, you know, clients during this time. We had, um, you know, like 
all sorts of um, protective gear that we were delivering to people that couldn't get out to go do it. We had immunocompromised people that needed help getting to doctor's appointments that we were arranging like rides to. I mean, you just, you don't know how you can contribute until you really start calling. And when you get your whole team engaged in that activity, which I love that you guys were doing, we did too. All of a sudden the energy you get from that replaces anything that could feel scary um, because you're seeing the good that you're putting out there in the world. So I love that. That's awesome. So good. You know, and the, and the last one is, is to focus, step three is to focus on the long term, right? Keep your big why and your goal in front of you. Very clearly understand, like, I know why God put me here on this earth, right? Sarah knows why she's here on this earth. And we know what our mission of our companies are and what our goals are. And when you have fear, um, and short-term emotions, right? Which fear is one of those. It's a short-term emotion. It's a reaction. Um, it causes us to make decisions that take away from our long-term mission. And so when we have found that we can set our eyes on our long-term mission in the midst of fear, then we're not making short-term panic decisions. Instead, we're taking the next step to fulfill our mission, the next step to fulfill our mission, the next step. And um, we're less reactive and much more methodical than with how we are going about reacting because there is some reaction involved, but reacting and proactively stepping forward then into moving through that fear and into productivity. Yeah, there's a, there's something my dad used to tell me often whenever there's like, you're feeling overwhelmed or there's something that is a short term emotion, he would Mm. say, do not make, do not let a short term emotion impact your long term goal. And so the decisions Mm. that you make in the midst of fear are really important. What you don't want to do is let fear make long-term decisions to where Mm. that will impact you in terms of to where you won't reach your long-term goal. Mm -hmm. And so keeping that in front of you, I know that even um, when I'm overwhelmed, like on a day-to-day basis, like not, not necessarily fear, but if I'm overwhelmed with just like all that's on my plate, thinking, okay, is this going to help me reach our long-term goal? Is this going to help me help a hundred families in every major metro city that we're in a month? Is this going to help me um, really impact the leaders that are in my organization? Like, And so making sure that as you're in the midst of fear, be very careful in terms of the decisions that you're making and keeping that long-term goal in front of you because, you know, it's important. I remember... um, yeah. During when when COVID hit, how many um, leaders let go of staff? Yes. And I kept thinking, no, you're going yes. to you're going to need them. You're going to need them. And so, like that, that's a an example of a leader in the midst of fear making a decision, a big decision um, yeah. that has long term consequences. And so it's like, are they going, are you going to need them to reach your long-term goal? Well, yes. Well then keep, you want to keep them. Right. And so like, Mm -hmm. be very careful about the decisions you make in it. When you stay focused on long-term versus short-term, it will help you, uh, it will help you make the right decisions. That's absolutely right. I love that. Well, y'all today, I think is very impactful as our world continues to evolve and change um, on really covering the three key things that you can do today to overcome fear and move into positivity. And that is number one, do the next right thing and take action. Number two, focus on others and not yourself. And number three, think long term and keep your big why and goal in front of you at all times. Um, We're so appreciative for you joining us today. I took away some great notes, so I hope you did too. And we want you to go out there and lead a big business and build an even bigger life. Thanks, guys. Bye.